Right, another challenge. Yep. And um, we are not far from my house because of my knee and I can't walk very far and my back and I can't drive very far. Basically, I'm falling to pieces, James. It's not good. <laughs> well, I was willing to leave home at 2 a.m. So that's <laughs> yeah, I did think. I said to Anne, <laughs> James is going to have to get up very <laughs> earlier to get here for <laughs> half past five. But um, anyway, it looks like it's looking good. There's some fog. And we've got a challenge where we're going to flip a coin, a lens cap. Yes, this is the second time we've done this, and it's the second time neither of us has had a coin. <laughs> so we're using a lens cap again. But in this case, it's a little Sony one. So what's what's um, so it's 100 versus 400. Yeah, let's say the logo side yeah. is 100. Okay. The back is 400. Sounds good. Sounds good. And just wait, just wait, 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 wait. Slow down. <laughs> what? <laughs> what do you want? out of 100 or 400? Uh, by the look of the mist over there, I'd say 400. The, 400. The, only, the only slight caveat I've got to that is that I'm getting to 400 with a two times teleconverter, which is not great. Oh, okay, yeah. That sharpness in. Yeah, I want 400 too. So, so you flip it and whatever it is, is what you get, yeah? Yeah, sounds good. This is complicated, isn't it? Sony's 100, is it? Yes. Okay. Right, I want you to, I want it to land on Sony then basically, so you get that. Ready? Yeah, I'm ready. Ooh. Oh, shocker. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, right, 400, 100, and um, go. <laughs> <laughs> so the good news is that I know the location and James has never been. And I know that actually 100 millimeters isn't gonna to be too bad. Um, now we never set the rules exactly. I don't know whether we're allowed panos or not, but I'm gonna say we can use panos, so. There's some pretty nice light over there. There's some nice clouds as well. With 100 millimeters, I'm gonna be able to get it a little bit wider. You know, in portrait, I'm gonna be able to get some of the clouds. And um, I won't be able to get some of that detail, but it's still gonna be pretty spectacular. What a morning it is. <laughs> James is making it easy for me. He's just stood here on this end, made the perfect silhouette looking over this amazing morning mist. And um, that's photo number one, 100 millimeters. I've shot it at um, around about F8. And um, I've just got to up the ISO a little bit just in case James moves, but it's looking pretty good this. It's good to get one to start, but I'm gonna head up just behind me here. You can see the top. So I'm gonna head up there and um, see what I can see. So the sun's not come out yet. The sky's pretty spectacular, which would make a reasonable wide angle shot, I think. But the thing to be careful of when it's like this is it's quite hazy. And if it's hazy, you don't get a lot of depth perception because if you're shooting with a longer lens, then everything's a little bit gray. Uh, so what I want is some way of breaking up that um, haze. Obviously the sun is a good, a good way of doing that. And I think as long as the cloud doesn't stop it, the sun's going to come up over there. And when the sun comes up, there's going to be some nice light rays. I've just got to hope it does that <laughs> before the sun gets too high. Because if the sun's too high, it's going to be shooting too far down. I want it sort of, sort of raking across the land. But um, yeah, I think I need to go back down there where James was, because I think that's probably a better spot. And then I see if I can just pick out some details. Um, there's also a nice shot over there, I think, as well. So I'll just show you a 360 view, view with, my, with my phone, actually. So that's my camera. That's the top. And you can see it's quite hazy. There's not a lot of definition. Um, the sky's quite nice. That's where James is shooting over there. And where I think might be nice is over there. So there might be a shot just like there. So I think I'm gonna shoot that now. See what I can get. Right, I'm gonna shoot in that direction. So, how's it going? 
Yeah, not terrible. My main problem at the moment is I'm using a teleconverter. I can't remember if I said that before. But uh, autofocus at 400 when you've got loads and loads of mist and not much, not much contrast, uh, that's been a bit of a struggle. So Tricky. Yeah, Tricky, yeah. So far. But it, I think it, it's quite hazy, isn't it? And also, the clouds are going, went, went subdued, but now they're getting better again as the sun's just about to come out. I think when the sun comes out, it's going to look good. Yeah. But, um, yeah, I, I think there's not as much fog over here, so I'm going to go back where you were yeah. and see if I can pick out some details. Those trees are nice. It's a shame about the electrical pylons, isn't it? Well, I've just taken a photo and I've just been saying I quite like them. Oh, yeah. Well, <laughs> yeah. well there we go then. The beauty <laughs> of shooting with someone else. But that's me and man-made objects. I'm like, get rid of them all. Yeah. So, right, it's getting good now, so we need to go and shoot. Oh, those clouds are good. It's a shame. see over there. Uh, nope, that's fog. Crack it. Right, as you can probably see over there, the sun's coming out. So I'm racing as quickly as I can race down here. And I've seen a tree that's looking pretty good. I don't really like these electrical pylons though. James said he did, but you know, James and man-made objects, he just loves them. Not so keen myself, but I think there's definitely gonna be a shot down here. Oh, this sun's so nice and soft. Just look at it over there. Right, let's get to this edge over here and see what I can find. Right, don't trip up. So, I have got, at the moment, uh, just let me show you. I've got this tree down here in the middle and this tree next to it. And I'm making those the center of the shot. And then I've just tried to get a little bit of the fog or mid-ground in as well because I feel like it just anchors the bottom of the frame. The colors are quite nice. The sun's just not quite coming out. The cloud's fighting it a little bit. And then I think I've got a shot just down here. So just down in this bit here, um, which I think has looked good. So I'm going to frame that up, get this shot. And yeah, it's looking pretty good, this. <laughs> Don't know how James is doing up there. I think um, he's... Um, 400 millimeters is long. <laughs> Oh, it's looking good now. So the sun's come out, so that means I've got the shadows. So I've got the shadows, and I've probably taken this shot before, so I'm cheating a little bit, but I've got the shadows coming down here, which creates some nice diagonals. And I love diagonals in shots, um, as I'll speak about next week. And yeah, this is, this is such a nice shot. We've got this nice sort of, sort of soft haze coming through from, from the back. And this tree just anchoring the, the, the front of the scene. It's really nice. I've just got to crop the bottom a little bit, but I think this is going to work really, really well. Just look at it now. It looks so spectacular. <laughs> it doesn't get better than this. Yes. I'm actually pleased I got 100 now. I think I might have struggled with 400. Oh, there's a bit of mist coming down there, which looks so good. Let's see if I can get that. So one of the things that you've really got to watch out for when you're shooting um, like this and, you, and you've got quite complex scenes is, is really think about the edges and the corners and the, and the elements of the scene. So here, for instance, you've got to watch out that if I compose it like this, can you see that that tree's on the edge there? Um, you know, the bottom corner, the bottom left corner here maybe is a bit tight. So just thinking about those edges is so, so important. You know, compose your shot and then just either zoom in. I can't zoom in or zoom out, but you will be able to, obviously. Um, and move it up or down. Just those small changes can make such a big difference to your shot. So think about that when you're shooting. And especially when it's more complex scenes like this, because it really makes a difference. You want to try and create something that's simple um, and things look like they're, they're placed in the right, in the right spot. Right. When we go next.
Well, I thought the sun had gone in, but it's come back out again. And this scene that I was shooting before, I really like, so I'm just gonna try and get a few more shots of it. The conditions in the background are really amazing. And I think that James, with his 400 millimeter, might have got something good, but he's just here, so we can ask him. What are you shooting? Yeah, I, there are some hills kind of peeking out in the distance, to be yep. honest. I'm more caught by the shadows on the trees in these fields. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. There are also sheep in those fields, which are casting really long shadows as well, but at 400, I've got no chance. Yeah, that's perfect at 100. Yeah, you get sort of two sheep, two and a half sheep, <laughs> yeah. which is Yeah, the sheep are really good, aren't they? Yeah. Yeah, so I, I've got those shadows down there and um, it looks pretty good. But it's quite nice now though, isn't it? It's, funny enough, I think it's getting slightly better. Yeah, there's more, I think there's more fog and the, the shadows and the, and the um, just over there you can see the, looks pretty good. To be honest, when we do these challenges, I kind of hope for bad conditions. Because if you get really nice conditions <laughs> and you're stuck at one obscure <laughs> I know, yeah, you want. It means you miss shots. <laughs> I know, I know, I, that's, that's what I was thinking. I did take some sneaky shots from my drone, I have to say, but um, that doesn't count. Oh, yeah, you're not allowed to enter those. No, no. <laughs> right, continue. So I've talked about this a few times, but the lights come out again and the lights slightly different because there's a little bit more fog now and I've gone horizontal rather than vertical. So I quite like this. I quite like these three sort of lines of trees here. I'm not sure whether it might just be a little bit dark on the left hand side, so a little bit heavy. Not 100% sure about that. Sometimes it's difficult. What I could potentially do is just move it around and, and bring in some light. So that might work if I do that. But then I'd need to zoom out a little bit, which I can't do. But uh, I think that looks quite good. If I were to be able to zoom out, then <laughs> that's what it looked like. But I can't. So that's what it looks like. If only. <laughs> I'm getting some jip over there, but there we go. Yeah, so this is, oh, this, it makes such a big difference when the sun comes out, doesn't it? Who'd have thought that? Right, so there's a tree that was just about here that actually I think is quite a nice shot at 100 millimeters, but James has probably got the best focal length for that because it, you can just isolate it so well and have white around it. Can you get the mountain tops on behind? You can. I'm having a bit of trouble. Uh, uh, it's close. I'm having a little bit of trouble because, um, as I said before, I don't have the... Um, I don't have a tripod plate on my collar, so that's a bit yeah. of a challenge. But <laughs> there are some layers up towards the sky. Just, um, sort of. just top tip for any um, beginner photographers out there, as James obviously is, um, don't do that. You definitely want to anchor your tripod onto the collar of the long lens. Well, I think people know to expect expert tripod advice from me anyway so. <laughs> this is like look at extended central column onto the thing there there's no wobble at all with that no. it's just like solid as a rock and i is. think it's broken i think i tripped over it remember i tripped <laughs> over on the beach in iceland <laughs> yeah. i think i've broken it so it's not safe in any case basically was that was, was that trying to escape a, a wave or was that when we were shooting aurora uh i was trying to escape a wave that time yeah, yeah. Well, which is good Save, saving I your life is better than knackering your tripod. Yeah, but I have tripped over a tripod multiple times on that beach. So 
I've just taken some shots up there and I said to James there's a good barn down here so we came to have a look at it but it's not going to work is it at 400 millimetres this? It's about three miles too close I think. You could get a barn stone but that's probably that's probably it. Anyway how did you find that? Did you get any good shots? It was better than I thought it was going to be considering I turned up with uh, only a teleconverter to get to 400 and no tripod plate to stick on my collar. Uh, so I, it, I think it went okay. I mean, it, it helped that the mist hung around. I mean, in the distance, the still it's is still really misty. Quite a bit it? of mist. It's crazy, yeah. Which often isn't the case, as uh, all photographers will know. Typically, it disappears within 20 minutes of sunrise. But that helped a bit. Um, all in all, a, a good morning, I think. Yeah, I, I, I think I got one or two good shots, hopefully. But by the time you're seeing this, you've seen them, so you'll know. Um, what, what's interesting with the mist, though, that, is that as the sun goes higher, then you, it, it's not as good shooting the mist, I don't find, because then it, you lose some of that sort of definition and layering, don't you, and the advantage. Because we, we were lucky, actually, we were shooting into the sun over there, so we got a little bit of beams coming through. Mm. But as it gets higher, it sort of flattens everything out a bit, doesn't it? Yeah, and I suppose it we... a bit white. We didn't have kind of all morning shooting with beaming sunshine because there was a lot of cloud cover in that direction as yeah, well. Really early. If it had been sunshine from really early on, it could have been pretty spectacular, couldn't it? Yeah. Um, but it just didn't quite have that. But all in all, it was pretty good. Um, anyway, go and check out James's video. His was already published, I think, last week. So check it out and make sure you give both of them a thumbs up and um, thanks for watching. And Bye. don't don't take any tripod tips from me. No, definitely, definitely don't do that. Although every time I'm with James, he uses his tripod all the time. Obviously, just the big lie, really. Okay, last minute entry. Just been coming back down to the car, and actually, I've got to admit that James spotted this, but. Um, He's a 400 millimetre, so it doesn't work quite as well for him, unless he climbs back up the hill somehow. Um, but there's a gap in the fence, you can probably just see it there, um, just about there. And I quite like the shadow as well, the diagonal line of the shadow, and then the grass is just nicely lit as well. And then the background's quite nice, so 100 millimetres, perfect for this. It's quite a harsh light, quite a harsh shadow, but it, I think it looks really nice. So I'm going to grab this, this will be the final shot. Well, as usual, that was really good fun doing the challenge with James. I hope you saw James's video a week ago. If not, I'll link it in the description or somewhere up here, um, but go and check it out. I just wanted to go through some of the photos. We've got some of James's photos here. Uh, I don't know what you think. It'd be interesting to know in the comments whether 100 or 400 was the best for that challenge given the um, conditions we had. I have to say, I think it was probably somewhere in between. Um, so if we look at some of my images, so this was a nice one. I think it, I think it worked pretty well. There was this nice sort of line of trees at the bottom. And then there were some other ones like this, which I really liked that um, I, I just showed briefly in the, in the video. I showed the image, but I didn't talk about it too much. This is probably one of my favorites from, from the shoe, I think. I just felt there was a nice balance between this tree, this oak tree on the right-hand side and the trees um, in the mist on the left hand side. So we'll get to some of James's in a minute, but this was the tree that me and James were looking at quite a lot. And um, I felt like it just stood out a little bit as the mist was just coming in and out and disappearing over it. And this was James's shot at 400 millimeters, which I really like. I think it worked really, really well. I think we agreed, yeah, maybe he's cloned out a the tree on the left hand side, but that's fine. And then this, this was James's other shot, this one and this one, which I really liked because I felt like they really, showed the the trees and the character of the trees before they got their leaves really really well so it works quite well in the winter months this or just coming into spring what i really like is you've got like a bird just on the top of here is really caught that really really well i think though the reality is that it's somewhere in between and that's why having a 100 to 400 millimeter lens is, is really good because this is a shot that i took at 100 millimeters um 88 millimeters um, in fact, so it would have been a bit tighter. It was difficult with my 24 to 120 just to 
get it get it right. So some of them were about 90 millimeters, some of them might be 104, 405 millimeters. But if you crop in on this top right hand area, I feel like this was a really nice area. So this area, because I think you had these trees in the top right up here, you had this nice sort of diagonal down here, and it was just really nice, but obviously that's now cropped to maybe a 12 megapixel photo, so it would have been nice to zoom in onto that. It just shows though, that the most important thing is getting out. Uh, I, I wasn't sure that conditions were gonna be great, but, and even then when we got there, if we'd have shot with a really wide angle lens, I don't think it would have been brilliant. Although I did get a good shot with my drone, which I'll show here now. And that was amazing, but I think, I think that worked better because it was higher and further around to the left. From where we were, I don't think it would have worked as a wide angle lens shot. So just picking at details in the landscape is so, so good. So 70 to 200 with a maybe 1.4 converter or 100 to 400, such an amazing lens for something like that. Anyway, it was good to do it. Uh, like I said, let us know in the comments, what did you think worked best, 100 or 400? Not who took the best photos, but what do you think was the best focal length? Okay, thanks ever so much for watching. And until next Sunday, bye.